Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode, we finally get to weld on the entire rear end of the Ferrari. So last week you saw me finally get all the uh, the fuel cell mounted, everything's uh, sort of sorted out there, so it's time to actually finally weld on the back of this car. As you watch me over the, all these episodes trying to get everything straight and square, now it's time to do it for a final time, just to uh, make sure everything's exactly where I want it, everything is perfect, and then we need to go through and start welding it all together to make it one piece. Yay! All right, the back end took a little bit more um, moving around and lining it up to get it to where I was happy than I, than I originally thought. Because I've played around with it a few times, I've played around with the boot floor and things, there's, um, there's bits and pieces that aren't exactly the way I originally uh, sort of lined them up. So it just took a little bit of extra tweaking and now it is lined up, ready to go. So um, the next thing is to actually start welding it on. And the way I'm going to do it is uh, I actually went down to see Tim at Zoo Autocraft. He has been really helpful on all this and he actually lent me a, um, apparently it's not great, but a, uh, a spot welder. So this is gonna save me heaps of time in cutting out little holes and welding them up and plug welding every little hole. So hopefully this should do the job. Um, this particular one, Tim actually has a really big one down there that takes three-phase power and all the rest of it that can actually reach through and do pretty much every spot weld on the car. Whereas this thing only can get into certain spots and it can only really do two layers of steel. So um, things like all this stuff around the windows, the spot weld is great for. But where it's like um, underneath the car there, there's sort of three layers of thick steel. It's not, it's not going to do that. It's not going to uh, penetrate. So... Um, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go around and uh, and start doing it. Some of these bits on the top here, I need to take this top layer of paint off. Underneath, everything was already prepped with um, weld through primer on both sides, and there's no there's no paint on the underside of this besides the weld through primer, um, which should be fine. But the uh, this just this stuff on the top of this this particular panel here, I'll just go through and take that off, and then I can start going around and hopefully see if I can actually spot weld this thing together. It's gonna, <laughs> fingers crossed, it saves me a lot of time. Initial test works really well. It, um, yeah, it's welded together quite nicely, these two little bits. So now it's time to go through and start giving a go on the car. <laughs> that thing is awesome. Oh, it saved so much time. This took me a minute, two minutes maybe. So quick, so easy. Saves so much time. It's all welded in nicely. I've got probably, you know, 50% more spot welds than it would have had in the fact from the factory, if not more. So it's nice and solid along there and uh, so quick and easy. Ah, oh, this is gonna be a dream. I might have to change some fittings and stuff to do the, uh, the back window. It's got a bunch of different uh, uh, sort of different attachments so you can get longer spots or tighter spots or whatever. But uh, at the moment, that's perfect. That's what I needed. So uh, now it's time to go over the other side and do the same thing again on that side. That spot welder is awesome. It saved me so much time going around. Now I've, uh, all of this is all welded on here. All uh, this window section here, the two side window sections, 
the uh, basically the whole top side is welded on except for the actual uh, the joining of the C pillar back here. Now I need to go underneath and uh, try and weld the boot floor to the back of the car here. So I need to uh, put some different extensions on it so I can sort of reach up and uh, get through and weld that all together. All right, that worked reasonably well across the back here in the middle, but on the sides, there was just a little bit of a gap here, and it doesn't actually look like it's actually, uh, uh, it's actually welded the pieces together. So um, I need to get under there and sort of uh, get the, uh, the edge of the floor a little bit closer to the, uh, the boot. I mean, it's, it's pretty close, but it's just not quite there. So um, I need to go through, just make sure that I've got uh, good contact the whole way along. Just take my time, get it right. So now with this back end spot welded on, what I've found is underneath here where I built these, uh, these sort of wing pieces, this particular one, uh, it just sits too low from where the boot floor ended up. Um, after all of my tweaking, it's uh, obviously not in the right spot. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna do a, a little bit of trimming and a little bit more folding and tweaking and we'll, uh, we'll get this all tucked away and then weld this lower section back onto the car as well. All right, so I've got all of the, uh, the easy bits done. The, um, the, the boot floor is now connected nicely. To get the, uh, the boot floor to touch on the inside, I just managed to get the dolly on the outside and got a long hammer, and I managed to just tap the, uh, um, the floor out, and that sort of met up with what it needs to, and that was enough to get uh, it all nice and solid. And now the boot floor is all nice and solid. The whole car, everything is solidly mounted. That's the easy bits done. Now I need to start tackling some of the other bits and pieces to actually get this finally welded on the car. And the next bit to tackle is actually this. So this is actually uh, like so the rear bonnet latch support brace. Um, it so gives a little bit of uh, extra support in the back of the car. This is the actually the original one out of my car that was bent and buckled a bit and I've uh, just sort of straightened it up. I still need to take the, um, the paint off of the back of it and I need to take the, uh, the, uh, the paint off of here as well and put some uh, weld through primer on there. And uh, what I'm gonna do here is I've just gotta get that sitting nice and neat and uh, weld it all on. So the top I can spot weld, the bottom I'm gonna to have to uh, probably MIG weld. So uh, let's start playing around with this. That spot welder works really great, but I left the timer on too long for some of these things, and I've actually welded, I've got these sort of holes where it's sort of, it's blasted through in a few spots. So I'm gonna have to go through and MIG weld them anyway and grind them back, which is a little bit disappointing. It's not everywhere, but it is in some of the places. So I'm gonna have to fix that up before we go too far. So let's go through now and start MIGging up some of those little defects.
Okay, so I've just started tackling the C-pillars of the car. I've got uh, the, uh, the first little few tacks along here, and I'm just trying to get this all flat and level. But I just changed over the, uh, the MIG wire over to uh, copper alloy MIG wire. Uh, it's a silicon bronze copper alloy MIG wire, which is apparently quite good for these uh, panels because it doesn't uh, corrode. It's actually like sort of free of corrosion. It's more expensive than the regular stuff, but it's not welding very nicely. So um, I'll, I'll sort of persevere for a little bit, but um, it's just, it's not as nice as what I would like. It just seems to be um, leaving a lot of black schmutz all, all over it and it's just sort of not great. So um, I'll persevere and see if I can sort of get the, um, the settings just right. But uh, for the time being, what I'm trying to do is uh, just sort of tack my way along and um, I'm sort of trying to, to uh, panel beat the panel as I go to try and get this nice smooth transition here. So um, it's sort of proving to be uh, a little bit difficult but there is access by a hole through the back of the C-pillar so I'm sort of just sort of going through and just tweaking as I go. It's probably just the way I'm using it, but I'm really not a fan of that uh, that MIG wire. I know it's supposed to be corrosion free and it's supposed to be uh, um, a good thing. I just can't seem to get it to weld nicely. So I am gonna switch back to regular mild steel wire and, uh, and continue on. This side is mostly done. I'm just struggling getting tools. I've gotta to try and make up some tools to be able to get in and sort of pull out some of these, these dents that are on the inside. It's just, I have a small window behind that I can get um, some tools in there, but it's still quite difficult to sort of try and get this um, as flat as I would like. Um, it's pretty good through the middle, but there's a little bit of a low here and there's a little bit of a low there that I want to be able to push out. So uh, I'll continue on with that, but I still need to weld on the inside here. So um, I'm going to go through now, change my wire back over and, uh, and continue on inside here and uh, weld it together. Okay, now I've changed the MIG wire over. I'm gonna go through and weld this panel on. Now, I don't have the spot welder that can uh, get in here. Um, Tim at Zordacraft actually has a single-sided one, so he can just sort of push in from one side and do it. Um, but um, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go through, I'm gonna stitch, uh, stitch weld this all on along the edge here with the MIG uh, and plug weld the holes that I've already uh, screwed in here. So uh, let's start working our way along and getting this all nice and one piece. All right, and I've gone through and stitched this all together. It's not pretty, but uh, I'll go through with the grinder and uh, tidy that all up. But it's, uh, it's all welded on now. That's nice and secure. And uh, I've also gone through and plug welded where I had my screws in. So that panel is now attached. I've also welded this tab on down here on the bottom of the wheel arch. That's nice and secure now. This uh, area underneath here, I will actually wait until I get it back on the rotisserie and when I turn it upside down, when I'm doing uh, some of the other bits and pieces underneath the car, I'll go through and weld that on securely then. But uh, it's all nice and tight now, so that is uh, going to do the job. Now it's time to go over and do the other side. All right, so like I did on the other side C pillar, I'm going to uh, now go through and weld this in. Again, I have some access from behind. These panels are a little bit tight. I might uh, just trim them up a little bit just so that I've got a a bit of gap there so I can get some good penetration and also so that the, the panels are sort of um, pushing themselves together. I need them sort of a little bit more space so I can get them uh, nice and level. This rust I'm gonna tackle at a later stage. I'm not too concerned about that now. At the moment, all I wanna do is get this all to be one nice, neat piece. So uh, let's start tackling this join.
and that all is looking really nice. Uh, I went through and did most of the grinding with the cutting wheel. I found that this works really well. Um, you have to be very, uh, very delicate with it because you, you, it's very flimsy, it can break quite easily. So you're just using the tip of it and just lightly uh, scraping away. And that works really well to get these uh, nice and neat all the way along here. So I'm just gonna go around now, just uh, for a, a bit of temporary uh, cover, just put a bit of weld through primer on it. And uh, there's a couple more bits on the other side to uh, finish grinding back and then the thing is on. Okay, and there we have it. The back end is back on the car. We have a complete shell again. Oh, that was a lot of work. That was a lot of episodes, obviously, of going through and just getting this all straight and aligned and all the rest of it, and then actually putting it on the car. It is so, uh, it's so nice to actually have it all together. But that is definitely all the time I have for today. So that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, in 1969, Zagato released the Alfa Romeo Junior Z. This was a controversial, futuristic design and it received mixed reviews. It was based on the short wheelbase chassis of the Spider Duetto and ran the full running gear of the Junior. It was a 1300cc twin cam four cylinder making 86 horsepower and it had an interesting feature in its rear area. It had a hatch that could be opened electronically just a crack to aid in ventilation. The Junior Z had a steel body shell with an aluminium bonnet and door skins on the early cars. In 1972, the 1600 Junior Z was released with the larger engine now making 108 horsepower. In total, 1,117 Junior Zs were produced, including two which were destroyed during production because they went up to scratch, and 402 1600s. All right, that was quite a, uh, an eventful couple of days, just getting this thing finally welded together. It's back to be one piece again. The, uh, the rear end's been a long time coming, getting everything lined up and perfect, but now it is actually all together and all on the car, all in one piece, it's, it's a good day. And it means you can start on the front end now. Yes, so hopefully next week we can, we can start getting in and doing something on the front end. That'd be good. It's always exciting when it starts to take shape. Yeah, and starting on something else. <laughs> <laughs> all right um as always like subscribe all that sort of stuff um you know the deal patreon um if you want to help us out and uh, you get to see the videos a day early all right cool t-shirt yeah i still need to make up some um alpha merch i know people have been asking about it and uh, it's it's on my list so <laughs> <laughs> bye guys all right guys see you next week hey guys in 1969 alpha romeo reversed had an interesting feature in its rear. <laughs> rear hatch. The 1600 Junior Z was released. Released? What is released? <laughs>